want to step back and look at your criticism of Donald Trump and what appears to be a softening position on immigration uh, that he opposed with New York Times editors. You think he can't be trusted on this issue. Is that correct? Well, listen, Donald has told us he can't be trusted. Donald has said he will be a totally different person the day after the election than he is today. He said he could be the most politically correct person on earth. And, and yesterday, BuzzFeed broke a story that there is apparently this secret tape that the New York Times editorial board has where Donald earlier this year sat down with them and said, hey, all this stuff I'm saying on immigration, I don't believe, I don't mean it, I, I don't intend to build a wall, I don't intend to deport anybody. Now, the New York Times said that discussion was off the record, so they will not release the tape without Donald's permission. And so yesterday, I called on Donald to, to have him allow them to release that tape, because one of two things is possible. Maybe he didn't say it. Maybe this report is false. If that's the case, releasing the tape will prove his innocence. On the other hand, if he did say it, if he went to Manhattan and told the New York Times editorial board in the middle of this campaign that he's lying to the voters on immigration, then the voters deserve to know that. And I would point out, I am the only candidate in this race who has a consistent record, who led the fight against the Gang of Eight amnesty bill. When Marco Rubio was pushing for amnesty with Barack Obama, Donald Trump was funding the Gang of Eight, was funded five of the eight members of the Gang of Eight, gave them over $50,000. I led the opposition. So if Donald is telling the New York Times he's lying, I think the voters deserve well, but, to know but, it. They deserve I, I to know it before they vote today. You're conflating. He didn't dial back, even by BuzzFeed's analysis of this, all of the things you said. But he did soften, we are told, his, his tough stance on immigration. So you think he, you've come back to this issue that he can't be trusted. To, to, to further that, you've heard the likes of Mitt Romney and others say, you've got to release your tax returns. Um, he has, and he says being audited, he can't. You and Marco Rubio have released your tax returns, but I know a number of accountants who've come back to me, Senator, and said, even in your case, you just released the, the two pages of your 1040, no schedules, no other things, that, that it really doesn't say much. You, they, they give you credit for doing that, but if Donald Trump did the same thing, it really wouldn't tell you much. Well, listen, I've released nine years of taxes. The first five years, I released everything, every schedule, every supporting documents. In the last four, I released the summaries. I'm happy to release everything if the other people do that. Donald Trump has released nothing, not a single year's taxes. And, and that raises what do you the suspect? obvious question. What do, you, what do you suspect then? When you argue that he should, yeah. I'll ask you what yeah. I asked Mitt Romney. What do you suspect? Well, as you know, Mitt Romney raised the obvious inference that the fact that he will not release his taxes suggests there's a bombshell, something really damaging in their taxes. And there's several things it could be. One thing it could be is that maybe Donald doesn't make nearly as much money as he so loudly tells everyone he does. Maybe it's all a facade. Maybe it's the case that Mitt Romney makes more money than Donald Trump. We don't know because Donald is terrified of releasing his taxes. On the other hand, it could be that maybe Donald has for years, in addition to supporting liberal Democratic politicians like Jimmy Carter and John Kerry and Harry Reid and Hillary Clinton, maybe he's also been supporting left-wing groups like Planned Parenthood. For all we know, he's given hundreds of thousands of dollars to Planned Parenthood to fund abortions. Now, if that's the case, that would suggest that what he's saying on the campaign trail isn't exactly true. But or, I talked maybe to Mike there Huckabee are shady on this subject, here. Senator. Yeah. He said that he released 10 years of returns when he first ran. And he said it was really, he regrets doing it because people pick it apart, especially people who don't really know tax law that well or rates that are different for capital gains versus dividends. And it, it was just sort of a, a, a feeding frenzy. And he regrets doing it. He says it's stupid Listen, to do it. A, 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 every serious presidential candidate releases their tax returns. The people have a right to know. And you better believe, come September, October, if Donald is still hiding his tax returns, the Democrats are going to rip him apart, and the mainstream media suddenly front and center, this is going to become a huge issue. Listen, Donald loses to Hillary Clinton in November, and this tax return I issue is a real problem. His hiding the tape at the New York Times is a real problem. And I'll tell you what's another problem, Neil. You know, even bigger than Hillary's problem with emails is the Clinton Foundation. I think it is an enormous potential scandal that this Clinton Foundation was a slush fund, that it was taking hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars from foreign heads of state, foreign governments, foreign companies, foreign businesses, while she was Secretary of State making decisions that benefited those countries. Any Republican nominee needs to be able to make the case going after the Clinton corruption 
Donald can't make that case because if he tried to, Hillary would laugh at him on the debate stage and say, but Donald, you gave $100,000 to the Clinton Foundation. You're part of what you're saying is the corruption. And Neil, if we get this wrong, if we nominate Donald Trump, I believe it has the potential to be a disaster to elect Hillary Clinton, to lose the Supreme Court for a generation, to lose the Bill of Rights, to lose elections up and down the ballot, will in all likelihood lose the Senate. And we can't risk that. We can't gamble with that. And if you want to stop Donald Trump, the only candidate who is in a position to do so in Super Tuesday is our campaign. We're running neck and neck. And if, if conservatives come together, I'm appealing to unity in the well, Republican Chris, Chris, Party that we come together. Well, Chris Christie obviously disagrees with you. He's supporting Donald Trump. Some people say that these guys campaigning uh, today in, in Ohio, that's, that's the, the next ticket. What do you think of that? Well, listen, I think where we're going to be late tonight is two candidates are going to have a whole bunch of delegates. Donald Trump's going to have a whole bunch of delegates. I'm going to have a whole bunch of delegates. Everyone else is going to be way, way down.